You're going to see a man feel the rain on his face for the first time in nearly 30 years. You'll also see him learn how to use Instagram and the ATM. Why? Because he was just released from death row in a case that raises serious questions about race, class, and America's justice system. For our new Nightline series, Firsts, here's my co-anchor, Byron Pitts. For 30 years, Anthony Ray Hinton was a dead man walking. But not now. <laughs> Family prayers and a dream no longer deferred. 30 years ago, <laughs> prosecution seemed being to take my life from me. 58 years old, Hinton lived more than half his life inside a cage, Holman Correctional Facility in Southern Alabama. Here, men do time, and time stands still. Today, he's seeing and experiencing things for the first time in decades. You ever, when you was a kid and your daddy catch a ride, and you want to see everything, uh, you just be looking, and make me really appreciate freedom more. Would you believe this is the first time I've been in the rain in 30 years? How do you like it? It feels wonderful. Yes, it feels wonderful. We joined him as he began his rebirth of sorts. So what's it like now to be able to walk? Where you want to walk, when you want to walk. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I really have to catch myself. Oh, my goodness. So, that's He is welcomed home, a party in his honor, hosted by the Equal Justice Initiative, led by attorney Brian Stevenson and his team of attorneys who fought for decades to win Hinton's freedom. Thank you for giving me my life back, just being here. As a team, you can say that you got an innocent man off there for him. His nightmare began in 1985. Ronald Reagan was president, Back to the Future was a box office hit, and under the cover of darkness, two Birmingham restaurant managers were shot dead at closing time, just months apart. A third victim, another man who survived the shooting and helped identify 29-year-old Anthony Ray Hinton as the killer. You're a free man now. What does that mean to you? I mean everything. I mean, uh, you never think about your freedom until it's taken away from you. You couldn't put a price tag on it. Oh, Even simple pleasures, like the convenience of using a computer. And I heard about Facebook and Twitter. We've been putting pictures of you on Instagram. There were over 3,000 people that liked this picture of you mm -hmm. getting out. Teaching him to use the ATM for the first time, even though he doesn't have much money. And that's when you had to put in a little code. He got my $12 back already. <laughs> so much about the world has changed, but the greatest still is a world without his mother. She died while he was locked away. It can't get no lower for me. I'm not a shame of it. I'm proud of it. That's the busted love of my life. See? I didn't grow up with a father. So my mother was my father and my mother. And she did everything she could. He goes back to the home they share together, now abandoned. Kind of hate to see it in this shape. It's his all. first time there since the night it was all taken away. And I was screaming, Mama, Mama. And my mom got right there toward the vent. And I just, they had me handcuffed back here. And I just did it like that. And she uh, went to stream and asked him, what you, what, what you got, what's going on? What y'all got him arrested for? What, what, what them handcuff on my baby for? Detective uh, showed me, said, I got your mama pistol. This is the room where Hinton's mother kept her 38 caliber revolver. Police said it was the murder weapon. Hinton's court-appointed public defender hired a supposed ballistics expert to dispute the prosecution's claim about the murder weapon. A persuasive expert, he was not. So his ballistics expert was blind? In one eye, yes, that's correct. He had to ask how to turn on the machine. He couldn't see it. He had to ask somebody, please help me. So when he put him on the stand as my witness, they crucified him. I said, they are gonna find me guilty. This document, prepared by the state's ballistics experts, indicates a number of questions about whether the bullets matched the gun. The defense was never given this document.
Mr. Hinton actually passed a polygraph test when they first arrested him. Passed it. Uh, he had an alibi. He was actually working in a warehouse when one of these crimes took place. Tom Dole was an alibi. He was Hinton's work supervisor back then. As far as I know, he was, you know, sweeping a floor. <laughs> sweeping floors 15 miles from the crime scene. Because he didn't do it. He, did, he, he was not gone long enough to do that if he was gone at all. Hinton was sentenced to death. That kind of shook my faith in the, in, the, in the system. What was the bigger hurdle, class or race? Oh, no question, class, poverty. Because without the money uh, to prove it, I think had Mr. Hinton uh, had the experts that we were ultimately bringing to this case, uh, he would not have been convicted. He was ordered to spend the remainder of his life in prison, living inside a five by seven cell. Pretty much sleep in a fetal position because your feet hang over the bed. You only have a bed that is mounted to the wall and a toilet. And that's what I lived in for 30 years. Men had taken his freedom, not his soul. They took my 30s, my 40, my 50, but what they couldn't take was my joy. I couldn't do a thing about the years, but I could control my joy. 53 inmates were executed at Holman while Hinton was on death row. My darkest memory would be seeing so many people that I got to know be executed. He languished in prison for years before his case reached appeals court. I was, had never been so convinced of someone's innocence than I had in Mr. Hinton's case. No one asked them. Judge Sue Bell Cobb was one of those appellate court judges who believed his story. There was no incriminating evidence. He didn't have anything from the robbery. There were no fingerprints. This is extremely unusual. His appeal was denied, but his team kept fighting. Uh, we'd exhausted every state court appeal, and it was the United States Supreme Court that finally intervened. The result was a new trial, the break Hinton had been waiting for. But just a few weeks ago, the state of Alabama dropped the case after a new look at the evidence could not match the bullets to the gun, and Hinton was released. But one man's joy, another's heartache. The son of one of the victims declined our request for an interview, releasing this statement. All the stories are saying that he is innocent and he is not. He was never proven innocent. He will be judged by God. He will see true justice one day. True. God will show him that I didn't do it. <laughs> this is my first final piece. As it tastes. It's good. He hasn't lost his sense of humor. Since I've been locked up for 30 years and finances is tight, five dollars a slice. <laughs> I don't sense any bitterness. Why is that? Bitterness kills the soul. I cannot hate because my Bible teach me not to hate. I've seen hate at its worst. What would it profit me to hate? Well, I think my next big project is to try to uh, get the money to uh, restore my mama's house and this will be a place I can lay my head and call it my own and give it the respect that I, I know she would be proud of. Freedom he is learning has never been free or easy. For Nightline, I'm Byron Pitts in Montgomery, Alabama.